Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to share a few messages with you on the occasion of the World Resources Forum 2015 in Davos. As many of you are aware, we are following with this meeting just a few weeks after in New York, leaders from all over the planet have adopted a new 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Indeed, with the adoption of 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the world has set itself a new agenda leading up to the year 2030 in which for the first time not only do we have a commitment to work in a universal mode, that means all countries committed to the same set of goals, but we have also achieved a remarkable degree of integration between the economic, the social and the environmental dimensions. This has been an objective and a vision that many of us have worked for for the better part of the last 30 years. In that sense, the SDGs are a vital piece of trying to bring the world onto a new trajectory, a trajectory that speaks to many of the issues and agendas that you will also be addressing at the World Resources Forum. As many of you know, UNEP and the World Resources Forum have been strategic partners for many years, not least through the work of the International Resources Panel that UNEP hosts, but also the collaboration, for instance, between UNIDO and UNEP in hosting the cleaner production centers around the world. In the agenda for 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals, there are many elements that speak to the kind of sustainable use and also circular economy aspects that will be at the forefront of this year's meeting in Davos. I would like to begin by saying that from the perspective of the United Nations Environment Programme, we are now able to speak to an agenda that not only addresses issues of environmental sustainability, be they in the domain of climate change, in terms of sustainable natural resource use, or the maintenance of the ecosystem services that nature provides to us in a way that we have not been able to do before. Both from within our own community, but also in the broader sustainable development arena, this kind of joined up and systemic approach augurs well for much of what we wish to achieve in terms of decoupling the economic growth and trajectories of our economies in the years to come from the natural resource use patterns of the past and also the pollution footprint that we have faced. It is also interesting to note that at the recent G7 summit in Schloss Elmar, Germany, G7 countries also focused on the question of resource efficiency. And indeed, UNEP has been tasked with producing a report that synthesizes lessons that have been learned and that could also lead to a new set of policy initiatives, both in the public policy domain, but perhaps even more importantly, with far-reaching signals into the world's markets for natural resources. As you said about discussing the implications of the circular economy, it is quite clear that not only these developments around us over the last few years and indeed the last few weeks are a signal that the world is paying more and more attention. What has become economically material is something that we have long spoken about in terms of the ecological and sustainability science and lessons learned. Our ability to inform governments, to advise also leaders in the private sector but also in civil society and at the sub-national level of governments will be critical in making this agenda be more than just a set of goals. UNEP has for many years been working on the frontiers of a transition towards a green economy, an inclusive green economy that speaks to many aspects of what both the circular economy implies and also a transition towards a more sustainable future will provide us with in terms of strategic orientation points. We do continue to rely on the science and I want to here once again acknowledge the immense work that the International Resources Panel has accomplished from within the United Nations world over recent years in drawing our attention to a significant set of departure points from the past patterns of natural resource use. Being able to codify these both in terms of the science and therefore the decoupling and reorientation of our economies <clears throat> but also in terms of providing policy guidance and signals into the market will be fundamental for being able to move forward. I hope that in the deliberations that you will have in Davos this year, we can further draw on the lessons learned that are many and indeed not only emanating from, let's say, the more developed economies, but what we're increasingly seeing in the United Nations is that transitions towards a green economy, whether it is in terms of the circular economy concepts, whether it is in terms of introducing new technologies such as uh, renewable energy uh, technologies, for instance, or indeed in other patterns of natural resource use, including the aspects of valuation. All this will provide us with an important base from which to be able to work with actors across the spectrum of our societies and economies. 
In the United Nations Environment Programme, our focus remains on delivering the most important science about the changing environment in our world. It is the departure point for our focus and also for the prioritization of interventions that will need to be transacted not only in parliaments and in the public policy domain, but increasingly also in the financial economy of our globe. Indeed, uh, UNIB is on the verge of releasing its new report that we call an inquiry into the design of sustainable financial systems, where we're also trying to address the question of how will financial and capital markets respond to these different signals. Can we mobilize green finance that will begin to invest in the capacity not only of the public sector, but indeed of actors across our economy, in the agricultural sector, the natural resource use sector, but also in the management of ecosystems and their services, right into the deployment of new technologies and industrial pathways of production. From our perspective, let me once again wish you a very successful World Resources Forum 2015 and to express our appreciation for the long-standing partnership and for the importance that the work that many of you provide both in your individual right and through fora such as the World Resources Forum. I thank you for your interest and wish you a very successful meeting.